Hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of News Dose, where I give you some of the latest news on games. And right now, there is a lot happening with TGS going on, so there is a lot of Japanese games in specific that is being shown. Of course, the big one was the highly anticipated Final Fantasy VII Remake trailer, and it's looking absolutely excellent. But before we get into that, I want to talk about Alan Wake, because yes, Alan Wake made waves yet again today, and he may be returning sooner than we think. Like, 2020 soon. Of course, Remedy did just release Control, but they revealed their content expansion roadmap today, which includes things such as a photo mode, new game plus, and some new story related stuff as well. But more specifically, I want to talk about the last expansion, named AWE, which stands for Altered World Event, which is in Control. But however, if you look at the picture, it actually has Alan Wake in the logo. And also notice that the font being used is the same as Alan Wake's font. In fact, it appears AWE might not just stand for Altered World Event, which is in control, but it also may stand for Alan Wake Expansion. If you've played through Control already, you may have noticed there was a few nods to Alan Wake, but developers do this from time to time, where they have some easter eggs for other games they've made in the past. But with this expansion now being revealed, it appears these may have been much bigger than just simple easter eggs. Is it possible that Control and Alan Wake is connected in some shape or form? Now remember that in Alan Wake, there was a lot of supernatural things going on that was inexplainable, so I don't think it's too far-fetched to believe that maybe Control and Alan Wake may be connected in some way. Even if you look at the logo, it appears as if Control and Alan Wake is colliding, and the way Alan Wake ended, we of course know that the mystery was much deeper than just a lake. And of course, Remedy just acquired the Alan Wake IP from Microsoft, so they have free control, no puns intended, to use the Alan Wake franchise in whatever way they desire. And all of this is starting to make much more sense on why they wanted to acquire the IP. This is something that I certainly wasn't really expecting though. I mean, once I heard about the Alan Wake acquisition, I assumed we would be getting Alan Wake 2, but that would be years away. However, it looks like they have plans for Alan Wake to return much sooner than that, and in the Control expansion pack nevertheless. I wonder if this will pick up from the huge cliffhanger at the end of Alan Wake, or if maybe it'll just be a small expansion and really get the wheels turning for an Alan Wake sequel. Whatever the case may be, I can't wait for this personally because Alan Wake is one of my favorite games of last generation, and especially on the Xbox 360. It was such a criminally underrated game back then, and I think we all deserve to see what happens next. What do you all think though? Will this just be a small expansion featuring Alan Wake, or will it continue the story onward from the cliffhanger? In other news, Final Fantasy VII Remake is impressing once again with a new trailer shown at TGS. We got to see plenty fan favorite characters return such as Turks, Corneo, and Reno, and they're looking great. Apparently Don Corneo is even voice acted by Mark Hamill, which is, that's pretty cool, and a little surprising. The thing is, remakes are often criticized among fans for artistic decisions, especially with characters, but so far I haven't seen any of that with Final Fantasy VII Remake. Fans seem to be really pleased with all of the characters' designs, and that in itself is an accomplishment. I mean, they even got Tifa's design spot on, and I think many were worried that they would mess her up, so considering they got her correct, I think we're in good hands from this point forward. We even got a little squatting minigame, and they hinted at the infamous cross-dressing scene as well. Of course, other things were shown, such as President Shinra being a hologram, summon monsters, and much more. So let me know what has you the most excited in this trailer. They really do seem to know what they're doing with this game though. Of course, the biggest change still remains with the gameplay itself being more similar to Final Fantasy XV than the original Final Fantasy VII. But it's hard not to like what we've seen so far, and I think the more action-based combat is going to appeal to a lot more fans than the turn-based combat would, while also making the older fans happy too. So I think this is a win-win either way. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments below. In other news, System Shock 3 pre-alpha gameplay was shown as well. Now that's a name you probably haven't heard of for a while, but yes, System Shock is returning, and the gameplay is looking pretty good, I must admit. 
System Shock is known as one of the best first person shooter game franchises ever created. So I'm sure a few people has their eyes on this one, but luckily the villain Shodan, it, or however you pronounce her name, is looking good in a bad evil sort of a way. Something I'm paying attention to though is whether or not this game will have that creepy horror vibe like the original System Shock did, or if it'll be more thriller and action packed. There was a few things in this very brief trailer that did signify that maybe it is a little bit on the creepy side, and the wrench is returning as well, so I, I think you could be hopeful for, for that return of it being a little on the creepier side. Uh, but I guess we'll have to wait and see more, but the game is looking good so far in its alpha stage, which is always a good sign. A few more highly anticipated games have started to get some reviews in the last few days as well. Uh, Borderlands 3 is almost upon us, and it seems to be doing pretty well with an 85 Metacritic average score. Borderlands has always been good with all of its loot, art design, and humorous story with wacky characters, so this in itself isn't too surprising. It's just good to see Borderlands return considering it's been 7 long years since Borderlands 2 released. It really doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it actually has. Time really does fly by. Greedfall also has been getting some reviews, and I was pretty optimistic about this game before release, as the studio spiders tend to make some pretty solid RPG games. Well, it seems like that continues with Greedfall, as it gets a 73 on Metacritic. Uh, critics are saying it's a good game with a good premise, but maybe not exactly groundbreaking, and that seems to be an issue with the, this studio in general. They are making solid games, but I would like to see them release a breakout hit. Nonetheless, I hope Greedfall does well for them because I do still think it looks like a good game. If you end up playing it, let me know your impressions of it as well. Neo 2 was also shown, and if you liked the first game, I think you're going to like the trailer shown this time around because, wow, does this game look good. I think Neo is one of the few Dark Souls clones that created its own identity and kind of separates itself from just being yet another Dark Souls clone. It offers just enough different to be unique in its own way, and a lot of that is just in the quality alone, and that seems to continue here. Team Ninja is known for making great games, so it shouldn't really come as a big surprise, but we gotta see several bosses like the monstrous horse and whatever this cat lady person is, and I just can't wait to test this game out for myself because it really does look like a good game. There is just something about these type of games that I love. They're, they're challenging, the combat just feels rewarding. Like I said, there's just something about these games I, I love. Staying on topic of Japanese games, we did get some more information on Yakuza 7. It appears to be very different than the other Yakuza games, and, and instead, it'll be a turn-based RPG. In fact, it's even getting summons. Yeah, you heard that correct. Apparently, you can use your smartphone in the game to pay money in the middle of battle so you can summon several different characters to aid you in battle. It's certainly sounding like a wacky game if nothing else, but I think it'll end up turning out to be a good game too. Yakuza has been one of those franchises that have had a really good turnout this generation, so I see no reason to believe this game will be any different even though it is switching up the formula. They also talked about a few different mini games because of course Yakuza wouldn't be complete without mini games, so they did add play spots such as kart racing, theaters, and pochi slot games. The, the kart racing one sounds really interesting too because when I first heard this I was thinking it would be like real go-karts or something. No, actually, it appears to be more similar to Mario Kart, and it's being named Dragon Kart. And yes, you did hear that correctly, it, it does sound similar to Mario Kart. You can even pick up boxes in the race to unlock weapons like a Gatlin gun or a rocket launcher, which is, like I said, why I referred to Mario Kart. Honestly, it sounds pretty awesome, and yet again, I think we're in for another good Yakuza game. Now, I did want to talk about one last thing before I go, but Hideo Kojima did want to warn everybody who is already sold on Death Stranding, which means if you already plan on buying Death Stranding, do not watch the gameplay trailers at TGS. These trailers are really only meant for the people who don't understand what the game is. Instead, the people that do plan on getting it, he says that if you trust him, don't watch these trailers. Anyways, that's it for this video, but don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button for more content just like this. Peace out.